most yap I've ever had to write in my life. It basically took me like 25 minutes to write the whole question. So I've got to try and keep as neat as possible for you guys. But here we go. We got some PMCC correlation coefficients revision for you guys. I would say this is the most comprehensive question you could get on the topic. So make sure you save this video. Um, and yeah, let's see how it goes. So it says, Bossman Dave studied the relationship between the numbers of eagles and salmon in six coastal regions, six coastal regions, and the results are gathered in this table. Dave calculates the PMC, PMCC, the product moment correlation coefficient for these data to be minus five, 0 0.5679. Writing all this has made me bug out. Hopefully Dave knows how to calculate this properly using the calculator. Hopefully that's correct. Stating your hypothesis clearly, carry out a two-tailed test at the 5% level of significance to decide if there's a linear correlation between the salmon and eagles. Okay, so we've got our PMCC value. Let's just go straight to it. Maybe we'll do it in a different color so you guys can see the working out a little bit easier. Oh, this pen is grim. Wait, do I have blue? I do have blue. Do you think blue would be easier? Hey, I'm bugging out. Let me, uh. yeah, we can see that. So part A, the first thing we do is we state our H naught. H naught is that we assume the population coefficient is zero, meaning when we talk about R, the PMCC, that is talking about the sample. Now the sample is supposed to represent the overall population, right? So this is our population constant. Some of you guys might know it as rho, but let's just keep it simple. We're not here trying to do Greek and that. I'm just gonna write P. P is zero is the equivalent of saying R is zero, no correlation between the two values. Now my H1 is that P is not equal to zero because we are testing if there is any correlation. Is there any linear correlation between the two values? Now the next thing we do is we just go to our tables, which depending on uh, which exam board you're doing, will determine which one you're looking at. Uh, I'll have on the screen the different ones and how you should be looking at them. Now I'm just looking at the Excel table. Uh, so I'm looking for a sample size of six. And because we're testing at the 5%, I'm looking at the 2.5% on either side. And when I see that, I see 0 0.8114. So my critical value, my, I'll call it my CV, is R is 0 0.8114. Okay. Now what's my critical region then? Well, you can even look at the modulus of this and compare it against this, but essentially we have this. So if I show you guys on a number line, you can always use a number line to help you. Zero is no correlation. We have the 0 0.8114 on the pos positive side and the negative. We're saying anything between here, you would accept H0, and everything outside of there, they're very extreme, you would reject H0. Because our sample size is very small, right? So we need really strong R values in order to reject H0. Now, our minus 0 0.5679 is over here. That's in the acceptance region. So what we're gonna say is my critical region is we could say R is less than minus 0 0.8114 or R is greater than 0 0.8114. And then we can say that minus 0 0.5679, I can't even see it within my own writing, 5679 is between minus 0 0.8114 and 0 0.8114. So we would accept H0 now this pen is rub running out, so I'm just gonna switch back to the black pen. You guys can see the dis the where the question finishes and where we start. So except H0, we're gonna say there's insufficient or sufficient evidence to suggest, or insufficient evidence to suggest. I usually say accept insufficient, reject sufficient. So except, except H0, insufficient evidence to suggest to suggest a linear correlation between 
salmon, and eagles. Okay? So be specific about a linear correlation in your conclusion because we don't always need to test for a linear correlation as we're going to do in the question. There could be non-linear correlations as well. Now part B says the salmon figures are actually given to the nearest 100 and the eagle figures to the nearest 10. Comment on how this could affect the validity of your test. Okay, so if the salmon figures are run to the nearest uh, 100, this could go up to 4250 and down to 4150. And this could go up to 2550 and 2450, etc. The question is, is how could all of these varied numbers potentially affect the outcome of uh, our test? Now, in the exam, most likely they will accept both perspectives. But from my perspective, this is quite far away from this. A hundred, a difference of a hundred proportionally to this, or even 50, if you add a minus 50, I'm just talking about the overall change. 50, with regards to all of these numbers, is very small percentage-wise. This one is very big. I could calculate it. So menu one, I could do the difference between the two. Let's look at the absolute value. So 0 0.8114 minus 0 0.5679 divided by the original. 0 0.5679 times 100. It's about 42.8%. Okay? So we could say, if you wanted to be super thorough with this, so part B, we could say minus 0 0.5679 is approx 43% away from the boundary. So it's unlikely, so it is unlikely, small changes in the number of salmon and eagles will change the outcome. Okay? If it was super close, Maybe under 10%, I'd probably suggest that uh, it could make a difference. All right, that's done. Bossman Dave then applies a logarithmic coding to each data point, obtaining the following, co uh, the following table. It triggered me that I couldn't keep this on the same line, but anyway, the game's the game. Uh, so all he's done is he's logged every single value. Remember, log means log base 10. They've now asked to calculate the PMCC between log S and log E. Now, for that, guys, I'm just going to explain to you. You just do menu 6, and you make sure that you go on to, so we don't need part A anymore, because I did compute this earlier because I don't want you guys just watching me typing into a calculator, all right? So you go, so I've got the best calculator in the world, the 991EX. You go menu then 6, then you go to y equals ax plus b, okay? So that one, uh, or a plus bx, mine actually says a plus bx, doesn't really matter. And then from there, you just type in your data. Okay, so you type in your data, then you go to option, and then you do number 3 for regression data. And when you do that, you get an R value for this to be minus 0 0.5888. Okay, you can check it yourself. I recommend you do check it. It says show that at the 10% significance, there is no correlation between log S and log E. All right, so we're basically just doing the exact same thing. You guys should treat this as easy marks, free marks. Free is in F-R-E-E. -E not three marks, although this could be worth three marks, literally. So we're going to do the same thing for part D. We're going to say H0, we're going to assume there's no correlation. H1, we're going to assume that there is some sort of correlation. Now, it's still six, but the level of significance has changed, so we're now looking at 5% on each side. 
So for me, when I look at 5% and 6, I get 0 0.7293. I think that looks like 0. Point, yeah. So my critical value is R is 0 0.7293. So my critical region is any R value, well, we're looking on either side, right? So we're going to say any R value less than the negative of this, basically the same as what we said before. Or R is bigger than the positive. Okay. So here, R value is not in that range. Okay. So we're going to say... Uh, minus 0 0.5888 is between minus 0 0.7293 and 0 0.7293. So we're going to accept H0. Then insufficient. So I'm not going to write again, guys. It's the same as part A. Okay. Now, finally, part E says, explain why Bossman Dave... Uh, oh, wait, no. Bossman Dave concludes that since there's no log log correlation, there is no nonlinear relationship between eagles and salmon. Part E is saying explain why Bossman Dave may still be incorrect by giving an example of the type of nonlinear relationship that might still exist. So, for this, I'm going to revise very quickly what we learned in year 12, and that is nonlinear relationships and how that affects your. Um, what type of graph you're looking at. Now, when it's both axes have been logged, it's a polynomial type. So, it looks like this. So you have a log, log. We call it log x, log y. Then you have some, some line. Okay, so say there is a linear relationship between log x and log y. So we have y equals mx plus c. It would be y is m x plus c, the m comes up and you log both sides, uh, you e to the, sorry, log is log base 10, so you tend to the power both sides. So you'd get log y is log x to the power of m plus c, so doing 10 to the power of both sides, we get y is 10 to the power of log x to the m plus c, be careful, you don't log each individual term. Now we split this by that um, 10, that plus being multiplied. So you get y is 10 to the power of c times 10 to the power of log x to the m, which those cancel, and you get 10 to the power of c uh, times x to the power of m. So you can see that's that kind of polynomial type. It depends what m is, okay? It could be 2, 3, 4. So what Bossman Dave has shown is that there's no log log relationship. But there could be a log y x relationship. Now, do you guys know what that form is? Well, if you have enough experience, which you should, because it's in year 12, you learn this, that would be an exponential relationship. Let's prove it. So if we have this, we have y is mx plus c. So from here, you just do 10 to the power of both sides. That cancels. Y is 10 to the power of mx plus c, which you break that off. That is 10 to the power of c times 10 to the power of mx, which if you put a bracket here, that's an exponential. Yeah, some 10 to the power of m, 10 to the power of m, which is a number, raised to the power of x. Okay? So what we need to explain is that Bossman Dave has shown that there is no log-log relationship. However, that doesn't mean there's not other nonlinear relationships. So, Bossman, Bossman has shown there is no non uh, no log-log. We'll say log-log nonlinear relationship. Nonlinear relationship. However, there could be, there could be a or other non 
linear relationships such as such as a so it doesn't matter which one you say but it looks like the y axis is the eagles yeah so a log e s type relationship such as a uh, should we write as a coordinate so an s log e such as uh, uh, s log e relationship which would be exponential. Okay? And that's your solution for part E. So for this question, never done so much writing in my life, is how you answer these kind of PMCC questions. So it's a very important one, guys. Make sure you save this video and like the video if you did learn something. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe for more maths content and if you're interested in my A-level maths courses. More details in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions for the community to help you out. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.